Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Power here again. It's time for another video. Welcome back to my workshop where I do build the uh, Wileshka skateboards and just play around with all the interesting and innovative stuff. So, what we're going to talk today about guys is uh, one component that is very important on every electrical skateboard and component you cannot be without really. So this is your switch. Your switch or your key whatever way you want to call it. So this is a part that will ensure that when you do want the power goes from the battery to your EC or VESC. There are a couple of different ways you can do it and I would like to cover it, cover it with you and also show you what I am going to upgrade on my nice DIY street cover. Beast on the list, remember. And before we start, guys, just quickly basics. Motors, motor cables, from motor cables to your speed controller or your EC or your VESC. Every VESC will require power and motors will require power, which will be coming from the battery located under your deck, on the top of your deck, or in your backpack. Yes, it is an interesting concept, and yes, I have done it, and yes, it does work really well. Take a look. In the description below, there's a link to the video of my beast. And yes, battery is in a backpack. So, you have to break this connection between your EC and the battery when the board is not in use. Because otherwise, the power will be constantly going into your electronic components. So, how can you do this? So one of the cheapest and uh, one of the, I think, reliable uh, methods of creating the break uh, between the battery and your ECs is a loop key. You probably heard this expression before and it actually comes very simply from the loop. So what you are doing, guys, and bear in mind that you have to use the anti-spark XT90s. This is the one with that kind of green lines through it it's a bit thicker and deeper they're a little bit more money but when you actually plug them together they will not spark up so what you're doing guys is you're literally creating a break in your uh, cables going from the battery to the ec so negative stays uh, di uh, directly connected uh, from the battery uh, to the ec and in a negative you are installing uh, one part of the connector like so, push, push, and then the loop key goes in it to create a connection. As soon as you pull it out, you break the loop and you lost your position from the battery. Circuit is broken, no uh, flow of electricity. So this is the simplest way. Some people are saying that there is a power surge is happening and some ECs get affected. Uh, well, if you don't want to use the loop key, Next thing you can do, and probably a better way now, is to actually install a switch. It's much neater, but it looks nicer as well. It will cost you a bit of money, or well, at least it used to cost a lot of money, and things are developing. So what you see in the front of you guys is the anti-spark switch kit. And this is the part that plugs into the switch I was just showing you that is located on my heatsink uh, EC connection, uh, cover um, and this here is 65 amp rated anti-spark switch and this is a massive heavy switch never had any issues with it but I've noticed that it's getting warm this is normal only got to do with actual uh, mechanics of this switch so what I've done, done a bit of research and got myself a Maytag anti-spark switch. So let's open the package together and compare the old generation with new. So this here is Maytag anti-spark switch. It does come with a little switch. It's quite tiny. Looking at the little LED line all the way around, I think it's probably going to light up. Well, they most of them do. So when it's powered up, it goes blue or red or green. 
we'll find out. And that's it. That goes outside, either on the side of your uh, uh, battery slash EC uh, case or at the bottom, whatever you want to do it. This is where all the magic happens. One side goes to your EC, another to your battery. As simple as that, guys. The only beauty is that this little thing here is 180 amp rated. Yes, you heard me right. 180 amp. Hence why the cables used on it are silicon good grade 10 gauge cables. And now compare to this monster right here, which is 65. Yes, difference is this, got, this one got a fuse here. Uh, not sure is it if it's any good. Uh, well, I guess it will just burn out if something really horribly goes wrong. Uh, however, this one I don't think does have, unless I cut it open, I don't know. But only feels like an electronic component. Well, that's it really. And this um, a Maytech and just box switch will set you back at $25. Well, obviously plus shipping, depending on where you are in the world. This one here. Uh, I bought from uh, Russian Federation and this I believe was uh, $40 plus $12 shipping to UK But here we go. I will be installing this EC together with new Maytech 6.8 <laughs> VESC based speed controllers. I got full review or unboxing and first impression review on my channel. Take a look if interested I have not yet connected them. So next video will be testing this switch. Well, just using and seeing if it's holding up. And also installing, programming and testing the new Matex 6.8. That's it guys for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope it's useful for someone. Uh, and yeah, as always, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the description below. I will always answer. And if the question is good, or good enough for a lo longer uh, video answer, I will do it. I have done it before and just uploaded a YouTube reply video. Take a look, it's actually quite interesting. We we'll talk about different types of off-road skateboards. Ride safely, subscribe, like, and by the way, follow me on Instagram. Just type in my first and last name if you are interested. I do upload uh, some cool photos and uh, videos or clips once in a while. See you soon, guys.